Donald Trump uh, was uh, busy live tweeting what was going on. He's done literally nothing to solve the the issues that are being protested about substantively. He's done nothing to try to bring people together. He's, of course, unable to do so. And, in fact, physically unable to do so because he spent a portion of the weekend uh, hiding in a bunker. Hundreds of protesters were gathering outside White House gates, shouting curses at him, throwing bricks and bottles in some cases. Nervous for his safety, Secret Service agents abruptly rushed the president to the underground bunker used in the past during terrorist attacks. Now, this, of course, was not a terrorist attack. It was uh, justifiably outraged. Americans outside of the gates, but this guy, the the alpha male to end all <laughs> alpha males, the macho man who literally plays the song Macho Man at his rallies, um, <laughs> hid in the bunker. No word yet on whether he listened to Macho Man in the bunker, um, but that's that's where he was. We can assume alpha male. This was like Trump's nine eleven. Yeah, Trump's nine eleven is just people being rightfully mad at him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's if he were capable of reading, he would have just continued reading a children's book as the <laughs> towers went down. But that's <laughs> not possible for him. So instead, he fled down to a bunker that I'm going to assume was catered by McDonald's. And um, so what, I, I, what I'm interested in is what is the feeling in the White House about what he should do? Because, I mean, we had, uh, he almost took us to war in Iran. Then there was a pandemic, a death toll of 103,000 and counting, uh, 40 million unemployed. Now there are protests around the country. Seems like maybe at some point he would do something. Well, we have some word from inside the administration of what he's thinking. Trump and some of his advisors calculated that he should not speak to the nation because he had nothing new to say and had no tangible policy or action to announce yet, according to a senior administration official. Evidently not feeling an urgent motivation Sunday to try to bring people together, he stayed silent. He later Did yelled, he? <laughs> I'm assuming about the reports that he was in the bunker. He tweeted, fake news. There's no other details, so I can't say for sure that's why. But he did add, helpfully, law and order. Mm. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to mean. He also retweeted people, including one tweet from whoever this is, saying this isn't going to stop until the good guys are willing to use overwhelming force against the bad guys. What? The president retweeted that because he apparently agrees with that. Who are the good guys again? I'm lost. I'm assuming it's the people running over protesters. If I had to guess, oh, that's right, who I right, think right. Uh, the good guys are. Um, we have a little bit from um, Ce Ce Cecilia Vega on ABC this week, I believe this morning. Um, on uh, sort of talks inside of the White House about what he might do. Yeah, George, we're hearing that there's growing divide inside the West Wing among top aides. You've got these two camps on one side, among others, uh, Jared Kushner, who are wondering what the political benefit is of having the president address the, uh, the nation from the Oval Office. They wonder whether this will do more harm than good. Frankly, they know he's not a huge fan of giving the Oval Office address, that he's made mistakes in them in the past. The White House has had to kind of scramble to play cleanup on that. Uh, on the other hand, though, you've got others in the West Wing, including the chief of staff, Mark Meadows, who are strongly encouraging him to do this because they say that he could really appear to be a strong leader, to be a unifier, a healer at this time of great crisis in our country. And frankly, uh, you know, there's a belief that this could help him with the African-American vote during an election year. <laughs> there's a strong feeling about that. Was it a feeling accompanied by a great deal of alcohol? Because... How could you think that would be the outcome? It's not her. She's reporting on. I know, but it, it, I don't blame her for reporting on that. But the way she said it made it gave it just way too much credence. Uh, credence. Yeah. That, that this is the time that he could really speak to the African-American community. Oh, man. Do you can you imagine what that address is going to be like when it finally comes? Of course. We know exactly what Antifa, oh, the we're, thugs. We're going to get to Antifa. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, did, did you read, by the way, um, about his call with uh, the brother of George Floyd? And no, the, I didn't. The, the brother was saying, I was trying to get him to understand our concerns and he wouldn't let me speak. He just not. kept cutting me off. Like, and uh, people don't remember. There's so many stories that people don't remember. Um, one of our soldiers died in Africa three years ago, I think. And he got on a call with the widow. And the call ended with a feud, a public feud between him and the widow. Because he couldn't just call someone up and lend a little bit of empathy to the situation. You think he's going to unify people? And at the end result of his address 
is improved relations between Trump and the black community in America. Who's stupid enough to think that? It's got to be you know, Miller. You have to listen. You have to, listening distinguishes humans from sociopaths, mm-hmm. right? Like, and so just you know, is is there what what can we all do in this horrible time? Listen, just generally listen, listen, and especially and and f the president and all that, but like. Listen to black leadership, listen to uh, black led organizations, movement for black lives. What are they calling for? What are they asking? You know, but once again, everything Trump does is a beautiful example of what to never teach your children and what to teach them. And that is just listen. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, like I, I'm just waiting for Biden to speak and it's probably he's going to ruin it. But look, he has been going around the past couple of days and meeting with people and that's the most I reasonably could expect from him. That's more than what you're getting out of Trump. For more political news, breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.